the long-awaited next installment of Blink-182 Ranking and Reviewing Series, 70 to 61. The suspense is getting real. What's number 53? What does the top 10 look like? What's number 1? Is it a greatest hit, or did I select a more obscure song to be a unique rebel? These answers will be revealed shortly. Regardless, these next 10 have about the same number of strengths as they do weaknesses. Okay, so here we go. This list is going to contain the first greatest hit, and also we're going to start off with another track off of Enema of the State. 70. Anthem. The only anthem that this song rocks harder than is probably Good Charlotte's The Anthem. But seriously, this song tries to be a tough, badass rock anthem and just doesn't really reach that, so it ends up being a whiny song about how oppressive parents are. I mean, this song is basically on the level of Simple Plan. The song's instruments are fast and do rock, but unfortunately, the lyrics are just too childish and immature to be an anthem. So as a typical Blink-182 song from this era, it's slightly below average at best. But as a serious rock anthem, it's laughable. There are just too many references to mommy and daddy being such meanies to ever take seriously. Anthem Part 2 is definitely superior because it offers a more social form of rebellion based on jaded experiences and a poor raising from authority, so it's more fitting to the anthem title than this song. I will give it credit for having pretty much the only unique bass part on the album, but other than that, it doesn't hold up, stand out, or meet the intense expectations that should be on arguably their best album. 69. Reckless Abandon It's practically an anthem ripoff. It's the same idea and song structure with different events. The only thing the song has going for it is the We left a scar size extra large line. It's not exceptionally clever, complex, or well sung, but there's just something about the phrasing and placement of it that's very memorable and easily makes it the highlight of the song. Other than that, it's next to forgettable and inferior to a lot of their similar ones. There are some humorous lines like the brownie fed dog and the parking lot incident, but the lyrics are more often incoherent or idiotic. 68. Untitled. No, this song is not called that word. That's just a stupid rumor. Anyway, this song's okay. The Dude Ranch version has some really bad vocals, almost as bad as Voyeur, but the live album is a great improvement, so that evens it up. This song's your typical breakup Blink-182 song, so while there isn't anything remarkable about it, it does exactly what it needs to. The intro sets the pace, and that first line, I think of a while ago, we might have had it all, I find to be quite passionate and reflective. Untitled's first chorus is also a high adrenaline moment. Really, it's alright. It's a lesser regarded song. Maybe if it had something more memorable or spectacular to it, I could rank it higher. But as is, it's good for Dude Ranch standards. 67. I'm Sorry. The last song on Dude Ranch doesn't really end on anything brilliant and ends up being filler. There are some highlights to it, however. The riff somehow manages to evoke a real pensive and apologetic tone, which is quite impressive. I guess the lyrics are above average for the era, Tom's vocals are unfortunately kind of grating. Also, Mark saying I'm sorry 50 times might drive the point home, or it could be drastic overkill. I think it tries to be a tragic pop song, but it's not really catchy or good enough to be charting any billboards. And the ending bit with Mark's dog is just really messed up and it's too horrific to be funny. I don't know if it's really fair to classify that as part of the song, but regardless, the ear shattering feedback is just as bad. I really wish it would just end before the obnoxious feedback and cut out the joke. It could have been vastly improved. 66. Hearts All Gone. I find it amusing that they open this song with the line, It's a new song that sounds like an old song. Somewhat, but not really. Musically, yeah it does. Fast power chords and drums with a needless break in the middle. Sure, it sounds a little bit like old Blink-182, but this song would feel incredibly out of place if paired with anything from Dude Ranch especially if this was an attempt to return to their already debatable punk rock roots. The lyrics are also a giant factor that prevent it from being a return to form. You know your song's not great when it's taking an imitation from Jet about having dirty boots. And what the hell is grocery store perfection? Do people walk in grocery stores and stand in awe over its perfection? I don't think so. I mean, there are goons everywhere, messes and need to clean up on the floor, objects are askew and out of place. It's not really what I consider perfection. I guess they mean maybe that everything should be perfect and in place, but still, that's a real loose comparison. It was a good idea to try and make a song like this for their reunion album, but it could have been so much better if they went all out in their original style. 65. Pretty Little Girl Yes, I'm going to complain about the rap part. Yes, it is atrocious and nearly ruins the song. I'll get to that last. I don't have too much to say besides that anyway. The song starts off as a good day ripoff, and then goes into some pretty bland ideas of love and how it progresses. There are some real highs, but also some lows when he's describing these images. And it's also one of the best vocal performances Tom has done since 2003. Now, 
onto the rap part. Why, why, why? I don't mind collaborations in music. They can be brilliant, especially when their styles actually effectively connect, like The Cure's influence in all of this and Tim Armstrong's in Cat Like Beef. That's not the case at all here when Trava dollar sign throws his talentless generic rap buddy a privilege like this to help gain them some notoriety and credit. All this Yellow Wolf character did was write some meaningless rush lyrics and then just randomly threw them in the middle of the song. That's what they did. It sounds terrible. It contributes nothing meaningful to the song and it sounds so completely out of place. I'm truly baffled the other two members went along with it. Now let's take a look at some of these lyrics. Like I never did good for us both, like you never did pull out that weapon and stick that knife in my back. This comes out of nowhere. Where else in the song does there suggest any betrayal to these two? And it's such cliched and vague imagery all around. Nothing that hasn't been said a thousand times before. Talk about uninspired. More than just sticks and stones, kinda like a bullet. Wow, worse than sticks and stones? Oh my god, I can't imagine how this relationship survived when the pain in it is slightly worse than the children's words for describing pain. Wait, it's kind of like a bullet. It's not like a bullet. Kind of like one. And we all know those hurt. That made me the meanest. The devil is just singing along to the song I write till I'm alone at night. Oh good, now he's mean. Look what you've gone and done, woman that was with Tom. I don't think Yellow Wolf should stay up writing when he's mad, because all it leads to is garbage lyrics of tired old images, randomly copied and pasted into a song that didn't need any of his collaboration. Obviously, I could go into any editing program and remove it, which I did, but I shouldn't have to edit music, that's ridiculous. It should never have been included, and now I have that slightly awkward transition that instantly reminds me of that ghastly apparition of uninspired lyrics from a rapper on the quality level of Lil Wayne. It wasn't a great song to start, and even Tom's lyrics here are nothing to write home about, but at least they never reached this level of trash. That addition only exemplifies its poorness. 64. Degenerate. The song's quite funny. And it's not a stretch to imagine the childish pranks this band did at that age. So this song's purpose is just to clarify that the band members are in fact immature asses. It's nothing short of bad luck that Tom continually gets sodomized by Ben Dover in prison. As for the music, it's pretty good. There's something about that unique chord structure that really works for the storytelling of delinquency. The incoherent rambling chorus is okay, even though some of the lines sound like something an elementary school kid would do, like kicking old Sally because she's fat. The song has a nice charm to it and manages to stand out on the album where more than a few of the tracks sound too similar to each other. 63. Josie. This is the greatest hit that baffles me the most. It's not really catchy, original, and generally not that good of a song. It has a hilarious video, but that's not really relevant to the song. And it's just the opposite of Apple Shampoo, but instead of all the problems of a relationship, it's all things a girl can do right and perfect in one, which isn't the worst setup for a song, and it's certainly one of their most positive tracks, but it's just so empty and stupid. I mean, some of the ideas are just really embarrassingly silly, like, it doesn't matter that I'm lacking in the bulge, really? The guitar is one of the most uninspired in their entire discography. B chord, another B chord, throwing in an E, maybe an F sharp to spice things up. While a guitar sucks, the bass has its moments during the intro and interlude. It's a stellar part, too, and refreshing to a song that has a lot to be desired. It's not the worst on Dude Ranch, but it's definitely the worst in the Grace Hits CD. 62. Give Me One Good Reason A seldom known fact is that this song was originally called Give Me One Good Reason Why Tom Should Learn to Play Guitar. But joking aside, it's not a great song. The lyrics are one of the most whiny and angsty because clearly that idea wasn't explored enough in Anthem Part 2. It's another song about how authority tries to control us and how we're all unique from an uninspired perspective of a crybaby. It gets some points for having the most original swear fest of all in I Hate the Jocks the Preps, the Hippie Fucking Scumbags, heavy meddlers with their awful pussy hair bands. But aside from that, there's nothing but bad lyrics. The chorus is four lines, two of which are the same, one is the song title, and one is just whiny anti-conformity BS. I will say guitar is better than average, the intro riff is very unique and pleasant to listen to, and the solo is their best power chord solo. I have nothing much to say about the bass and drums. And it's a shame, because the song could have been good with a different subject matter or more creative lyrics. 61. Natives. One of the few songs on Neighborhoods that has competent songwriting and there are also some well done sections that chronicle the dismay of being a bastard child who gets no appreciation or respect. There aren't any standout lines, but at least all of them are consistent to the main idea and mood. This is possibly the best Blink-182 song, lyrically of course, about being fed up with authority. To an extent. I think it has a much larger idea of feeling useless and inferior 
rather than placing a particular blame on anyone. It's more about trying to break free of pathetic inferiority and trying to gain independence, which could make for a great song if it had better music. The intro is just a ripoff of the one from Eminem's, which already dooms the song into forgettableness, and the rest of the guitar, bass, and drums seal its fate by offering much of the same. The interlude does nothing and feels too much like Ghost in the Dance Floors, which isn't good because this track follows it. Tom's vocals sound horrid and the line, I'm fucking Jekyll and Hyde, is either a lame attempt at staying edgy through needless swearing or a hint towards Mark's bizarre sex life with classic literary characters. Regardless, it's kind of a shame because most of the lyrics are good, but the rest of the song ranges from average to bad, so it stands right about in the middle of the ranking. That's it for this list. The next video will open with a very controversial choice, an absolutely wild and popular fan favorite that is adored and admired for its simple yet memorable songwriting. Okay, so like it and subscribe it up. See you next time.